What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually run the container that we built in the previous episode. Now getting everything up and running uh, the first time around is quite involving. So I'm going to split this episode into a few parts. In this episode right here, we're going to be covering, um, you know, we're going to get the container that we built. I mean, you know, we've, I've configured um, the app a little bit differently in this episode because, you know, when you're running in production, um, things are a little bit different. And I'll talk to you guys about the conventions and why we do the things that we do. Um, and once you guys understand this, it'll become second nature. It'll be very easy for you guys to get Docker deployed in production. So in this case, when I mean production, I mean the Docker machine that's actually running right here on our machine. I don't mean like, you know, in the cloud somewhere. Um, so I over here, if you look at the screen, uh, I've got Docker running, uh, as you can see. And so what we're going to do is the first step, uh, this app in particular, MovieDB, requires three different kinds of services, Elasticsearch, PostgreSQL, and Redis. So configuring each one has, you know, there's a method to the madness. Let's just leave it at that for now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, create a Postgres database container and we're going to launch our app. We can, we're going to be able to see the web UI. We're going to build the container and run the container, the web UI, so we can see the search, it, the, the landing page. The search part won't work yet because we're not going to touch Elasticsearch today. Uh, we're just going to run our container and, uh, you know, get it connected to our database. We'll run the migration and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the Postgres uh, container. And so let's start by doing that, docker run. Um, so this is just a hyphen D. And then what we're going to do is, uh, you know, this is going to be running in the daemon. Um, and then we're going to do v pg data uh, var lib postgresql data. So this is the mapping. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, um, please go and check them out. Um, we're mapping our volume, uh, you know, with the name that we want. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to just run the container. So I'm going to give it a name, Postgres, and then Postgres. That's it. So I'm going to run this. And this is now going to run our container, our Postgres container. So the next thing we're going to do is, um, you know, I've made a few changes to um, to our uh, database config file. Uh, so if I head over to our sublime text, so I, I have a pull request over here um, of all the changes that I made to the application. And I'm gonna walk you guys through each one of them. So, um, you know, I this is the Docker file. This is what we did in the previous episode. Then I added Redis gem and a Redis namespace because, you know, later on when we work with Redis, we're going to use namespaces to connect uh, to the Redis instance. Then, you know, this was in the previous episode as well. We have the active record null DB adapter. So I also added the Puma gem, you know, when we're deploying into production, we don't want to use Webbrick, which comes default with Rails. Uh, we want to use Puma as our application server. So this is just a gem lock file. And then, um, you know, in when you generated a Rails app, you know, they changed the way they run the console. And if you don't do this one here, you're going to get some kind of warning. So this just fixes the warning when you run bundle like Rails console, um, you know, an updated version of Rails. And here what I've added is, is something interesting. So let's go over into the sublime text here. So this is the um, the web file uh, for, you know, the, it's the bin web file. And basically what it's going to allow us to do is start our uh, application just using uh, sh and then bin web, just like that with Docker. So it'll make it a lot easier. So we don't have to do bundle exec, you know, Puma and then config. We have it all already set in our bin file. And so the only thing to be aware of is uh, if I go into CLS uh, CD bin, uh, is that, you know, we have to make sure that this file is executable. And if you don't know how to do that, it's very simple. Uh, all you got to do is do chmod plus x and then bin and then just web because we're already in the bin directory. And then once you do that, your your um, web file is going to be an executable, which you can then run with Docker. All right, so I'm going to uh, CD out of that. And now we're in the root of our application. So what I'm going to do is because of all the changes that I made, 
Um, so let's go back to the GitHub to, to continue talking about the changes. So as you see here in the production file, I also said config serve static uh, files to true. And this is because, you know, we want, you know, our Puma app server to serve static assets. Um, because in this case, we're not going to mess with Nginx or any reverse proxy or stuff like that. We're just going to access direct to the Puma uh, instance that's running, right? Our application server. So we need it to serve assets. Otherwise, we're not going to see any assets. Um, and, you know, I'm going to cover this stuff in the next episode. This episode, we're just going to cover... Um, the, uh, connecting it to Postgres, uh, but so we're not going to worry about this too much. But I'm going to link you guys to this pull request so you can go and see all the changes. Uh, so one more thing I added was uh, this config Puma file. So I got this straight up from the Heroku uh, Puma config using the exact same setup as Heroku in terms of Puma here. So yeah, so this will all work. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to build the container again, you know, just for good measure because of all those changes. So I'm going to do docker build hyphen T movie DB and then dot. So this is going to, you know, run that docker file script that we wrote in the previous episode. All the new changes um, that we incorporated into this episode that I just walked through, walk you through, it's going to incorporate it and rebuild our image that we're going to then run. All right, so it's going through the process of installing all the gems, as we can see here. So in the meantime, I wanna point something out over here. So when we're running in production, we're going to be setting a bunch of stuff um, in our environment variables. Now in, in our machine here, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna have a place to set all the environment variables. So what I've done is I've created a .env.prod file and I, I put this in the git ignore so that we don't actually commit this file into production because we don't need it in like, you know, in a, in a real production environment, we're gonna have a different way to set our environment variables. But when we're just running on our machine here, it's nice to be able to put everything here in one file. And um, so what I've done here is I've set the rack env to production, uh, the secret key base, so you need all that for your, um, for your for a Rails app. And over here, something interesting. So the DB host, I'm sending it to Postgres. And we're going to cover this, you know, why it's called Postgres a little bit later on. Uh, then the DB name, I'm just, you know, using movie DB production. And then uh, DB user is Postgres, you know, because we set this in the previous episode. And the password is just blah, blah, whatever. Whatever you set when you ran the container, your Postgres container. Uh, so we're going to cover Redis and Elasticsearch in a different episode. And another thing I've done is in the DB, uh, in the config database.yaml file over here, uh, I have made, um, you know, all the settings for the database except uh, environment variable. And so what's going to happen is when we run this in production, then it's going to use environment variable from here, um, you know, in our as our database setting. So that's basically how that works. Now, you may be a little bit confused about this whole Postgres being the host. And, uh, you know, when we run the container, you're going to see why. We're going to link the containers together. All right. So it's uh, finished building. And uh, we have the, you know, we have the Postgres, uh, you know, uh, container already running. So what we're going to do now is, um, you know, we're actually going to run our MovieDB container. So Docker run. Uh, and then we're going to do D, so for Daemon. And then we're going to do uh, name is movie DB web one So um, the, the name that I'm doing here is, um, you know, this is the name of the app. And this is the web process, and it's web process number one. Uh, you know, we may have more than one web process in a production environment. So it's this is a good naming convention to have. All right, so the uh, we're going to do the env file, so env file equals dot env dot prod. So this is just being referenced from our, you know, inside our app directory over here. Um, so yeah, so that's how it's going to reference the environment variables when we're running it in our machine here. And so the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to link Postgres, Postgres. So basically, this is going to be the name of the service we're linking to. So as you, you know, remember when we ran the Postgres uh, container, we set the name to Postgres, and this is the name that it's going to be set like in the host. So um, this is the part that makes that host thing here 
works. All right, so then we're going to expose port um, port 4000. Uh, so if we take a look at our Puma config over here, uh, you can see that I've set the default port to be 4000. Uh, you can change a port by setting the environment variable in your production file to 5000 or 3000 or whatever you want. But if you don't, it's going to default down to 4000. Okay, so um, let's go back to our terminal here. And so I think this is everything. Um, I've named it. And so now we're going to do movie. DB because we when we built it we tagged it with the movie DB name and so yeah uh, so this is going to work I'm gonna hit enter and uh, actually before that I have to run the actual web process uh, so yep so we wrote this script here uh, you know as I mentioned before so we're gonna run the script and we're gonna do that using sh bin web hit enter now the container is actually running if we take a look here you can see that it is now actually running. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to go into the console, the Rails console of the container we just ran. So I'm going to do docker exec IT. Anytime you see IT, we're going to the terminal. So we're going to you know interface with the container. And then we're going to do movie db web one uh, bundle exec rails C. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you that the actual database connection is actually working. Uh, so we can do movie dot first. And as you can see, it's actually querying from the database that we connected to, um, you know, before. So uh, I'm going to exit from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bundle exec rake db drop. So we're going to drop the database. Uh, if everything works correctly, you will be able to run all the migration commands. So you can do rake db create. Um, and then rake db migrate to set up the database. So as you can see here, everything is working. All right, so there you go. Uh, we're out now actually running our application container migration just worked. And you know, if you want to preview, um, you know what it looks like in the browser, you can actually. So if I go into the kydematic over here, uh, I click here. I can see the web address that it's exposed for us. So I can copy this. So copy and I head to my browser. And then I'm going to put this in like that. And there we go. So as you can see, but now search is not going to work. As I mentioned before, we just have the database connected. You know, Redis is not up yet. Um, this is just a production app running with all the compiled assets. Um, we have not connected Elasticsearch. So, you know, if I do this, it's going to give me an error, obviously, because, you know, doing the search actually requires Elasticsearch to work. Uh, so we're going to cover Elasticsearch in the next episode. Um, and so, you know, if you have a basic Rails app that with no dependencies on Elasticsearch and Redis, this is enough to get you going to deploy into production. Um, so, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys found that useful. Don't forget to share this video and don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter as well. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.